Welcome to this week's episode of AI Chat. And today we are talking with Ross Chapman, who is the founder of a low-code, no-code agency called Sky So Clear. I've known Ross for many years. He is an absolute legend, particularly in design sprint theory and had been taking design sprints all over the world. Uh, Ross and I have a conversation of how low-code and no-code have massively embraced the AI race, uh, but also we are still in the early days. We see all these announcements all the time from Notion to Webflow to Canva to Slack, uh, adding uh, AI to their products. But to be honest, most people aren't really using this stuff today. Uh, anyway, I don't want to spoil the full chat and the conversation, uh, but Ross drops a dinger near the end around uh, the concept of holding your business value, your agency value, your company inside of an AI model and it completely blew my mind and made me rethink a few things. So uh, enjoy the conversation. Every product under the sun is now adding it. Um, you have an unparalleled knowledge of the low-code movement that's happened and also design sprints mm -hmm. as a process. So I was really intrigued to have a conversation with you and just to say, like, A, like, first of all, like, what is your perspective of this AI world we are currently in? Like, is it as crazy and fancy as what it seems to like me and the stuff I'm looking at? Or are you like, I have no idea what you're talking about? Would be the kind of <laughs> the first thought. Yeah, maybe. I think obviously it's having a big impact on how every part of what we're doing has, has been done so and how it's going to be done going forwards. I think initially it's something to be used to help in your current uh, job or your current task and it speeds things up. But I think as people understand the power and potential of it, it's going to start replacing whole job functions. And I think that's where people are missing the opportunity to really look at what they're doing and the, the value that they're, you know, exchanging with. So I mentally see AI very um, close to no code. Uh, because it's 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 part of the same family uh, in a way, and I think that um, with every new invention, people get very excited about it. People move, you know, off the bandwagon of you know CBD and onto the bandwagon of um, AI. And uh, but I, I think it's actually a incredibly credible technology that uh, if everyone needs to start using. There's there's a little bit of a hesitation as you know leaders are starting to say oh pause the development on it because you know maybe it's starting to get evil like it did in terminator but um yeah i i think it's it's certainly an enabler on simple tasks all the way up to something a little more critical I, I, and not, like from the stuff that's been released obviously ChatGPT is the main one that everyone's aware of but actually I think the when you take them the headline tools out of the equation, which is a lot of the fear mongering mm. stuff, it's actually the low low and no code tools which seem to be adding the functionality the most. The Canva, the Notion, the Webflow, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, have like I've used some of them. Like a lot of them are still in beta and stuff. Like I use Canvas one. I wasn't massively impressed with Canvas stuff mm. so far. Um, but I've seen some of the stuff in Notion in particular, where it's like summarizing notes and things. Like, are you are you now actively using the tools inside of the the no code tools from an AI perspective, or is it just playground time? We are using Notion AI for sometimes brainstorming by myself. Uh, it gives me ten ideas of of what to do with with whatever I put into it. Uh, haven't gone too far in it. For example, I know a use case, it will take a transcript of a conversation and it will draw out the, the three key next steps or action points. But yeah, we're, we're using it in, in Notion. Uh, it's, it's part of our um, kind of service to set up Notion uh, workspaces with companies and show them what it can do. Hopefully, it reduces pointless meetings where it could have been a Notion document. And hopefully, it makes some of the most boring work more exciting because it's it's giving it a new interface i think something like notion gives ai the interface that makes it more useful and i think that's what's been lacking 
uh, up until very recently. Because, so, what, what, can you expand on that? What you mean, like, as in Notion as a tool or just the... The functionality then I think the, the, the AI that you use needs to be in the context of a very useful place in which you use it. I've seen uh, recently, I think Glide has started experimenting with a AI uh, chatbot in the bottom right-hand corner. It still feels like it's learning rather than giving you any kind of useful tips. Yeah. Um, but in, in Notion, it, you know, we're, we're using it for... Um, brainstorming, like I say, collecting uh, information. And it's it's really helping in a lot of our day-to-day. -day. And I think because it's in the context of our business pretty much runs off Notion, then it's got the most power um, because that's, that's where we spend a lot of our time and attention. Interesting. And then, and then are you... I hadn't really thought about that, like, because at the moment, the, the AI kind of proposition is like that people are trying to use it as a tool to bring people back, you know, like you can use it for office and for presentations and stuff. But actually, if you're using these tools already, like from a notion point of view, it just becomes like an extra yeah. feature, you know, like in, in, and, and from a speed up, but, but also um, in the context where you're using notion with clients, do they, do they, do they then, because those things like people who, who work in our kind of industry, like we're, we're happy, we're the early adopters, we're happy to play around with the technology, even if it's not 100%. Mm. And we understand the, we understand when it's yeah. going to fall over to some degree. When you then bring in a client who may be like, you know, Sally or James from HR in an enterprise or, you know, Jeff, who's got a 40 year old company that's just about to go online. Or a startup founder who just has just come up with an idea off the back of their kind of domain mm. expertise. Are they are they even aware of this stuff, or do they have some kind of knowledge of it from the wider kind of AI movement that's been kind of portrayed in the press? It might be the companies that we're talking to in the stage they're at, but I think for. A number of decision makers in traditional companies, it still feels a bit of a novelty. And any new project should have AI, but maybe they haven't researched what that actually means. I think the the where it's being used in, in real force is, you know, makers like yourself, um, you know, the, the the kind of the the AI for good um, work and it's it, it comes in to uh, as a value add, but not as a key kind of primary driver. And it might just be because we're not purely positioned the agency to be in the AI space. It's more the no code space that, that can be improved with AI, but it, it's more of a, a value add rather than a key proposition. So yeah, it's, and, and admittedly, it's been a bit of a novelty for me. I might be writing a document and then just ask Notion to give me 10 ideas or, um, you know, uh, five things to do. Uh, and that's that's probably the, the limit that I've been uh, doing it um, just because we've been obsessed about no code and low code here. But I, I guess though, with the low code and no code stuff, though, like they're like they're adding the tools, they're adding these yeah. AI features to their products yeah. a lot. Um, and if you know, I guess give, to give people a bit of a mini context is that you know, um, with Skyscraper Clear, you're basically going in and assembling multiple products to be, and hooking them together to produce what would be more you know traditional behemoth of technology. Yeah. Actually, you can link three or four no code tools together and achieve the same outcome within days or weeks rather than months or years potentially that, yeah that's so, it so so therefore you know having like i wonder at what point we flip from you explaining to someone okay so now so let's say for example you built a system for um scheduling and managing social mm -hmm. media stuff we're just going to pick yep. something random um, and therefore, Canva is the source of uh, artistic creativity. 
So therefore, you're basically saying, look, you're going to create some field files here, you'll export them, and that will export them straight into blah, 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 blah. When you're then explaining, when, if they've not seen Canva before, um, do you think, like, where does the AI bit come into that conversation? I'm assuming not massively yet, but, but do you see, like, this becomes like a, um, oh, I'm jumping around a bit. Like the the low code no code stuff is already a, quite a massive jump for people mm. who are mm. there, and then you, so basically you're going to say to them, uh, you can build the banner you were going to outsource to a marketing agency in ten minutes using yep. this tool, and 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 actually the conversation is now you can describe the banner that you were going to outsource to a marketing agency and build it yeah. in five seconds, uh, and then you get to pick which one you want. It feels in some ways kind of a bit too much of a jump. Like for you and I, we're like, okay, I get it. But for someone coming in, does, and equally, does it then massively devalue the original premise of the, of the offer? Yeah, I'll, I'll try and unpick that a bit. So we we set up Sky Clear to to deliver no code projects, apps, websites, and it's really a acceleration of what a traditional agency would do, which is take a project, start from scratch, have a team of designers, developers, researchers, and take a number of months doing it. What we're trying to do with no code is take templates, uh, take existing models, take existing technology stacks, and accelerate through assembly, essentially. Having all these technologies, put them together, because right now in 2023, they're in a really good kind of drag and drop WYSIWYG type interface. What I would say, and, and the result of that is a, a company might have a niche need for a app. Maybe they need to go paperless for this auditing software because that's how they can, you know, keep everyone safe and make sure that they're learning the, the right things and kind of diagnosing the, the things that need attention. I think we're quite early in, in no code and we're obviously quite early in AI. I think as things develop, I mean, AI we're looking at to help in marketing. Uh, you know, we don't necessarily want to work with a marketing agency. We would rather start using AI to create content that can be edited by us for tone of voice, but the idea generation can come from it. And, you know, you can plug it into Banner Bear or Canva, like you say. And we can start generating a buzz. Now, if we get a number of reps of that, if we do that for 12 months, we start getting results, then maybe we'll add kind of AI marketing onto our services and, and be more of a full service. But right now, we're within 12 months, we're just focusing on no code. So I think AI certainly will absolutely change marketing forever. I'm interested in how it can change products and services, especially when it may be coming from an external source. I'd be interested in AI that is purely focused on the data within a company to make processes and decision making much, much easier and much more accurate. Um, so, yeah, I think it's early days, but I'm, I'm very excited to, to see how it's going. And and have you seen like do you obviously you're using Notion for like the idea generation and stuff and the brainstorming? Are you finding that the results that come back are actually unique enough, or is it more just to give you a bit of a like an like a curveball just to to make your brain think? More? Yeah, I, I see it as uh, talking to myself and and it, 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 it giving me something to to work with. Um, I'm not too worried about quality because I, I think initially, certainly in our uh, maturity, we're looking at quantity. Quality will follow. Um, so in terms of it being used as something that, that can give us value, then yeah, we're, we're, we're using it in that respect. Um, but, you know, we, we have other intelligence tools. We've got probably AI working behind the scenes in our CRM. We've got AI working um, in, in other areas, but they're more features of existing tech stacks that we're using um, and dependent on whether you know our, our clients want to use them so yeah I, it's 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 helping us kind of be a bigger team without the the outlay of hiring in more people
right now. And, and I think, but that becomes the you know this you know, in the software in the develop, software uh, development world. You've seen we've seen we for years saw this 10x developer mentality where a developer who was so amazing, godlike, even they could do 10 times more than their colleagues. That that now seems to have. I saw recently a lot of stuff around that being achievable by someone who's more mediocre or even junior because of the hmm. tooling, for example. So, so then it kind of, in, for, you know, applying that same logic to your world, like, is there a, I wouldn't say a concern because obviously there's knowledge and expertise to know which is which, but I guess the, the, we're not that far away from these tools, like being able to link to each other, you know, chat GPs, for example, is exposing more plugging kind of systems. And we look at how, you know, like, like if you picked, like what's a typical like integration for like a front end web flow thing into something else? Yeah. What would be like a typical, like a, a typical integration? Yeah. So, uh, so far we've worked principally with Airtable, make.com and uh, some email and SMS uh, integrations. So we're providing a, business process um, and system, as well as a customer experience layer. Uh, in other areas, um, Glide apps look like a, a great kind of drag and drop tool, and we're actively looking at that, and then the data um, store being Airtable behind it. With Webflow, um, that powers the website, uh, and you know we're actively looking for um, projects to use Webflow on. And, um, and yeah, I, I'm just, it's it's getting increasingly more valuable when teams are trying to find quicker, cheaper, better ways of solving the problem. And sometimes the ideas aren't in the room. So yeah, using a lot of these technologies, mm. assembling them together. I think where AI can help in some of those stacks, uh, we, we prefer make.com over Zapier because Zapier just feels like you have to be a developer to, to get it to to done it is getting better um but it it, it does feel like you, you have to take on a, a kind of coding language course just to understand the, the ifs and uh buts in it um but certainly the more visual these tools become the better and more accessible they come to everyone so uh, anything that we want to work on we want to hand back to the team and for them to continue the good work. It's not a land and expand job, it's say accelerate and give back. And uh, and that that's where the tools need to be at the level that they're becoming. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess it's that, like in my, <clears throat> I kind of jump ahead, like maybe too far ahead and think, you know, in two years time, could could even your proposition be automated by the AI? You know, mm. as, I, as I evaluate my own self-demise in this AI yeah, different world, um, you know, and, and, and I guess it's, you know, you, you can see how the ability to say, you know, spin up uh, through natural language, be able to say, you know, from a, I guess, more of a, a simple way, create me a, you know, in Airtable, create me a table that would store uh, a classic personal profile. And it just goes, boom, 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 creates the, t the columns for name, address, all the usual stuff. And that's great because that's just accelerating the the, the mm -hmm. assemblement mm -hmm. of the process. But but actually, I, I don't think we're that far from um, writing now. Hook that into Twilio, yeah. and whenever this whenever this row gets changed, send a, send a, a message confirmation. You know, maybe we're a few years out from that type of scenario, um, but it. It does start to open up like the um, the thought process of as we're making this stuff even quicker and quicker and quicker to do, do we start to lose like the value in how easy it is? You know, like like will we get to a point where we don't have agency? Like we we have no need for an mm -hmm. agency because employees can do everything. And I know, and I know that's quite a uh, an anchor, um, a really out there mm -hmm. kind of statement, but if the, the the feeling and the the Kool-Aid drinking of AI uh, feels like we're pushing in more and more of that direction. But I really wonder if the people who have that mentality sit inside the organizations. 
Yeah, I, I like that conversation. I, I think people forget that we invented computers to do our work for us and they're increasingly getting better at doing that. So I, I think it's, it's certainly something that we need to let go of and, and just see, see how it rolls. But the, the, the job of a computer is to do a lot of the problem solving. If you think of, you know, the, the Enigma sh machines and things like that, that a team couldn't possibly do fast enough, uh, efficiently enough or accurately enough. So if, if AI and, and no code are heralding in the reminder that computers are supposed to do, or technology at large uh, are supposed to do this stuff so that we don't have to, and it can do it better, then um, I'm all for it. Obviously, people will be worried about that and checks and balances and just making sure that everything's okay. And that's where over the next few years, people will be manually editing, um, signing off, uh, checking, making sure it's all good, which will slow things down. But over time, like, you know, self-driving vehicles, we'll learn to trust it. Do, do, you, do you think that the, um, like what, in, in the event where the, hold on. So like, we both come from agency <laughs> backgrounds previously. Um, so we understand that the, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, from, you know, John, Joe Bloggs on the street in a company to where we are today is a massive, you know, progression. <clears throat> and ag traditional agencies took a lot of that um, pain away from hooking all the different things together and understanding the permutations of things. The low code, no code stuff that you're working on in particular is basically saying, uh, you don't know where to start. We have the knowledge of the landscape. Let's basically assemble that into a package. But actually, the the, the tooling, the support, the et cetera, et cetera, is now so mature that, that you can then mm. have a go. Like, they might not have the technical abilities internally, and there might be some training or yeah. upskilling. But, but it becomes this thing of like when, if we take that the next iteration, which is the AI, inverted brackets, gives people the ability to um, hook this thing together, write this article, design this image. Um, like, where do you see, or have you thought that far? Like, where do you then see, like, what's, the, what's your then, like, purpose in in that flow of going from a problem to be solved you know not, not to paint the demise of agencies mm. and, and and the whole picture but it, i think a lot of people maybe not yet but soon will start to i, I never thought before like two years ago mid journey could be <laughs> like we didn't yeah. know about mid journey and introducing some stuff visually mm. That is unbelievable, yeah. and me as yeah. a technical person who can draw red, yellow, red, and square boxes through text can generate some unbelievable yeah. graphics. Um, I, ca I can't then tweak them like an artist could or anything like that. But I've now removed the need of a freelance designer to produce some assets for me for probably ninety percent mm -hmm. of the stuff I do. Um, Equally, now that's going to stage further, where you know me as uh, me with my developer hat on, I'm looking at the code and how this goes, and I'm going, it's game over in five years. Like, you know, this stuff's becoming so um, like we're potentially even going to move to a world where code doesn't in theory mm -hmm. exist because natural language becomes such a um, predictable yes. Uh, yes. channel to yep. build stuff. So, like, you know, and I guess from your perspective in in the product world. Um, like what you know in in that in thinking of that line, where does it make you think like where you should place your business? Because I think people, not necessarily in the low code world, but in this this pipeline of agencies or service mm -hmm. industry, and 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 they might not see this coming. Like you know, I know you you potentially didn't shift to low code necessarily because you saw that it was going to change agency, but. The fact that you're in that, you kind of have seen in the near term, like, like it's mental what you can build in mm -hmm. like a few days. Yeah. In low code, compared to the traditional. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, you know, I, I I love agency life and I despise it in in a way. There, there's there's certainly a, a balance between yeah. being valuable 
in the market and also recognizing where you're not. And I think the, the value of what we're trying to do is be a subject matter expert, know, know about this world more than, than anyone else, and initially work as accelerators. So we, we, can, we can do what you need to do because yes, you're doing the most important thing in the business, but that second priority, third priority, we can, we can help out. And that, that's classic outsourcing that you would have uh, at an agency. I think over time, uh, needs will change and, and services will change. And like I say, I think no code and low code, we're quite early. I think next year it will start really kicking off if, you know, what I'm reading and seeing um, is, is going to uh, manifest. And I think there will be more power given to the average um, consumer. Um, if you have an idea, it's even easier to get something out in the world. You don't have to be a developer. And there, there have been so many companies started with a solo developer just grinding, putting in the hours, getting something out there, getting the knockbacks, trying again. And I think it's making starting a business or selling a product or service even more accessible than it ever has ever been, which should be celebrated. And then all the agencies or consultancies need to do is level up. You know, what's the next thing that they need to encounter? What's the thing that they can assist with either side of that? And if they don't feel like that, they might create a product themselves and do a do a base camp and move from being an agency to to a product that contributes to that world. So, yeah, no, I, I think it's incredibly exciting. I think where there's flux and uncertainty, then there's opportunity. And uh, I don't see anyone getting comfortable as a good sign. I think that, that all of this is is moving and. I think it's only looking back that we'll know whether it's moved in the right direction or not. Yeah, I get, and, and I guess in theory, we'll never know if it was right or wrong because- You have to make small little bets. It'll be what it'll be, it'll yeah. be no time machine. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I've personally been excited and excelled at being in the service of others. Um, you know, I don't always want to have the idea, but I can damn well help with the idea and do something to help with, you know, delivering that, learning with it, experimenting with that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think you, you're just in a position to assist in a more accurate, faster and cheaper way than ever before. Mm. And, and I guess the, um, it's an interesting perspective. And I guess in my head, like, I think it's more my logical brain that is like, if everything's fixed, there's nothing to do. <laughs> But obviously humans, that's not how humans, that's not how humans work, you know, like, and if that was the case, I would still be writing in VB6 code because we would never invented any more programming languages to solve bigger problems. And oh, cetera, you you have that in um, lots of industries. I mean, you still have financial advisors when you have robo advisors, you know, automatically moving, you know, um, where your funds should be and how you should allocate them. And all of that power has gone onto your phone rather than that one hour meeting um, that you have to pay for a lot. So. Yeah, all of these, you know, industries and services are, are changing because of it. And all of this takes time. You know, even if AI is here now, it might not hit the mainstream for any time soon. I'm not an expert, I don't know. But it takes time for things to, you know, really become more mainstream. And, um, you know, we're quite early with no code and low code, um, but we, we have to start. And um, yeah, it will probably become it could become the, the normal way of starting um, in a few years' time. I, I think it, it's kind of, it kind of has to be, doesn't it? I, you know, I, I spoke in my kind of first episode of this with a guy called Gavin Jones, who runs an agency uh, in the UK. And, and he finds when people come to him, you know, they, they have an idea, but they typically don't have budget. So he sends them off and goes, look, you can, you can kind of do something in this other tool that you can do for maybe a few hundred dollars and you can validate and make sure it's actually something that you know you want to invest in because that's also a different problem when you then hit you know a million dollars like if you're running a lot of stuff through a system you don't want to be potentially entrusting it on a platform but then that might equally change as these products mature and they can handle that level of scale um but i guess the you know when when people come to you now or when you're having them early client conversations, 
is like what's their view of the technology landscape like from a from not necessarily just from an ai and low code perspective but are they uh, do they come to you with like thoughts of what they want and how it's going to work or is it more this is the problem i'm trying to solve or this is the thing i want to make how do i get there i don't think the conversation from that group has changed much over the last five, six, seven years. We need an app that does X. We need our website to convert better. We need to make sure that 450 people enter this award system. Um, so they, they've always gone to the result they want, and then they've asked the market how to best solve it. I think for anyone starting out, they can start making the app um, or at least start creating the landing page to start creating an email uh, subscription list to then do a Dropbox and evaluate the market opportunity before building the thing. Um, and, and Buffer did the same thing. Um, so no, the, the questions that we get or the, the, the briefs um, are all around, we need to do X, how would you approach that? And you know they're still comparing different methods to get there. Um, but there's never been a lack of being able to share different points of view and different ways of getting to the, the same outcome. And, you know, the, the more that we do this, the, the more we might find more predictable ways of getting there. But yeah, it's usually started with, we need X that does Y. And um, it hasn't been too specific. But that's really because we've been around the, the kind of small, medium part of the, the um, spectrum. Enterprise, of course, have technology requirements because they have IT departments and sunk cost into existing technology. Um, that, that's why, in, in my experience, we've only been doing design. And we've changed the conversation between doing it from Photoshop to Sketch to Figma. Um, but in, in those situations, it's very much been, it has to be this because we're going to have to look after it and that's where enterprise gets a bit murky so yeah certainly for for uh, snms um and, and startups it's been more we need x that does y yeah do you find that so but so even now they're not coming to you and saying i've built i've built this typically i've built this thing and gathered some email address they're not would you say majority are still not at that stage they they're still at the problem rather than the I've tried something. I think it's not widespread enough on how to start something yeah. with nothing other than time. I don't think there's enough uh, online courses or you know it, it hitting mainstream education yeah. of if you've got a good idea, the first thing to do is this. And back in the day, consultants yeah. would say it's business business model canvas. Today it would be a landing page collecting email addresses. So I, I think yeah. I think the rules around it are changing, and I think the information isn't as widespread, and that's probably where some agencies are excelling because they feel like they are covering that um, knowledge gap. But I think the more accessible you make it, the the better it is for everyone. So if so if so, so okay so therefore if if people are coming to you with not massive knowledge of low code. Or of it, obviously, and therefore, definitely, probably no knowledge of the AI space currently. Um, when you then show them what you can do with this technology, which I imagine is very much like here's the products they hooked together. Here's an example of how it works. They, and either then you may show some AI stuff, or they may discover it because they're playing around with the tool. Are they like because they haven't had the the mid bit of it being painful, are they surprised or are they just kind of like, well, that, that makes sense. Like to them, it makes sense to, that you would design a tool like Airtable exists and that's how it works. Or do they see that it's a power up from Excel? I try and use language that people will understand. So I'll say Airtable is the database, but it looks like Google Sheets. Uh, it needs something on the front of it, so you might need softer or stacker. And some, some of these are definitely new things because usually we're talking to, to founders or owners or uh, management teams. Um, but the, the um, 
yeah, the, the education is, is just, from my perspective, more show me, don't tell me. I, every conversation I have, I'm showing them something, I'm screen sharing, I'm seeing, look, this template exists, we just need to adapt it. We're 90% we're there and we haven't even started. Um, so I, I guess it's... But when they, when they yeah. see that, when they see that, do they, are they like, that's cool? Or is it, is it just expect, like, I guess I'm trying to understand if, you know, have we made such a jump now to, with low code, no code, and the AI stuff starting to play its thing? I know it's still all very new, but the, when I speak to normal people outside of the tech bubble, like I spoke to someone, a friend the other day, and she wrote, her, her sister was resigning from a job. So, and she was like, oh, I'll write you a letter for you. So she just went on ChatGPT and was like, write a resignation letter for this, like, this type of job. Yeah. And bum, bum, sent it to her sister. That process just became expected. Mm -hmm. You know, she was like, she, and she said it so blase that it was like, oh, it's a cool thing. Um, but I wonder if you've not been privy to, like, the step before that would have been write some headlines and then autocomplete would basically maybe fill in some paragraphs or something. Um, or Grammarly would make it sound a bit better. They were the kind mm. of the web two tools of AI. Mm. But now we're mm. taking this next jump the same way that low code and no code stuff is the web, th not to use the web three terminology, but yeah. it's the next step up of WordPress and you know them type of tools, which are more like the web two world. If you've missed that middle ground and just been, I guess, native to this other stuff, do they just think it's like normal? And don't have the preconception of the pain of the other, the other things. They just expect the tools to link together, or is there still like, a, well, how does this work? There, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of question, and you know, we're we're now trying to understand how best to solve that. Is that through you know weekly live streams? Is that through you know being more evangelical, or even you know becoming experts in those technologies and having a badge next to it? Uh, the the other side is, you know, sometimes they've been burned in the past. They chose Webflow um, after, you know, putting up with WordPress for too long and adding too many plugins to slow it down. Um, and so they want to know why is this better. And I think, I think there, there's there's obvious improvements in new technology, but it often needs that kind of wider uh, audience to to give them all those FAQs and say, you know, why make this decision or not? I think my point of view is if you find something doesn't work, it is cheaper than ever to drop it and to replace it with something else. And I think that's where, and I've always been recommended, get one thing to do one job, get another thing to do the other job. Don't get one thing that does 10 jobs because you can hot swap them out. And that's personally why I've never been a fan of something like ClickUp, where it will do 10 things, but I'd rather use 10 different things that talk to each other. And I think that's that's probably my, my bias around it. So yeah, things change. Hopefully they are getting better. Um, but I do think we have the opportunity now to say, well, if you don't like this, there's that. And let's switch to that. Let's try it for a few weeks. And I think there's just more tools doing more niche things that you can do that nowadays. Mm. And, and, and I guess if that stuff starts to move, because I do think there's this one area of the... Of the of, so ChatGDP has got this plugin system they're releasing soon. And if you look at the documentation for the plugins, it's really interesting because it doesn't... Like most... If you're going to build a plugin for a system, it's very prescriptive of like, give us the schema and the format of how it's going to return yeah. data and yeah. all this stuff. But actually, you just you describe in English how your API works. And, in, in it's really, I, I wonder if, therefore, in the future, will APIs kind of disappear to a degree and the systems will just have natural language to be able to communicate together. So you'll be able to say, you know, in Airtable, you know, when 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 this like I said before, when this field when this row gets created, mm. add it to Mailchimp, add it to this, add yep. it to that, um, and it beca and you kind of more and more remove the developer or the or the technical person away mm. from it, um, and it makes it a lot more accessible yep. to a broader populace. Yep. 
and I and I wouldn't like to me that's just that sounds amazing because you're going to get so many more interesting mm. things mm. created because the domain experts will then be massively yep. empowered, yeah. you know, to do stuff. That's that's um, really what I want to see. Like the e even now with something like Airtable or um, um, Stacker, you still need to say, here's the API, here's the token it might expire, then you have to kind of go in and change it uh, or review it. And you're just like, there's got to be a time where these apps talk to each other because you'll actually stay with the central apps longer because it's giving you more value by connecting with other ones. Hopefully we go beyond just API connections and you, you, you're you able to, to, you know, do what you need to do with the technology available. I think it's, pretty absurd that a lot of things in a lot of companies don't talk to each other but we're finding a massive opportunity mm. to bring that into systems yeah. that do um you know the fact that up until recently you couldn't send out a link to secure a meeting in your google calendar and you had to use calendly for years is remarkable um you know the the fact that uh mailchimp is not a great tool um but it's been one that everyone points to because it's had that that brand popularity but it doesn't intrinsically easily um you know do anything to give you a lot of the intelligence that you need um where other tools know exactly how to solve that through the the user interface so yeah i would like things to talk to much better and i think in time the market will force them to um so yeah i i'm looking forward to that future i i i agree because i i used i did the same thing i recently i set up mailchimp for something and it was a horrible onboarding experience like for, like as in try because it's doing so much now you know and it is trying to I'm like i just want to send yeah. an email to yeah. some people like and um and it, and equally I think maybe that just comes with maturity of product and therefore, and typically when they make that shift over to enterprise customers, the, you know, Google analytics was lovely mm. for a long time. And then if you try and open it now, it's like, but then that opens up a new market opportunity. I've seen a lot of alternatives to that, which are literally drop this one line of code and then yeah. you can see Like some Phosphor results. or Plausible but, but or really, something like you don't even have to have a, a cookie yeah. banner because it's anonymized. So yeah, yeah. server side. Yeah. Yeah, or, or yeah, or anonymize, and and, it, and and again, it comes back to that thing of like, well, what are you actually trying to solve? What data are you trying to extract? And and I wonder also on the on the flip side of that, when you look at things like if all your like because all your company information now, I guess, is therefore in in Notion, like all your project plans, the whole the whole yeah. process. It like for you as an organization. How cool will it be in the near future be able to to be able to like query that through a chat of knowledge to be able to say, you know, what you know, what why was our last project not profitable or super yep. profitable? You know, what was the thing we spent our most time on? Um, and is there a way we could have used you as in the AI? Um, because Notion could come back and say, Well, actually, you spent loads of time on meetings of this type. Mm. Um, Notion could have just summed up yep. like an async video from all of you. Um, to me, that become that's a whole like a fascinating. Mm. But your data, but most companies, their data isn't in Notion, so they're dependable, dependent on SharePoint doing it or Oracle doing yep. it, because that's where their repository of stuff sits. Yep. Um, but I think it, I think it's still quite a um, a small subset of companies who are running Notion for their data source. Would that be fair to say? There aren't tech. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our, our need for it was because everything will be in there from now until whenever, you should be able to estimate the business valuation at some point by looking at what's in Notion. That's how I see it. You know, especially for an agency, how do you value that? And if there's enough of a pool to put everything in there, then you can start really analyzing and like you say, interrogating some of the information to get some really good answers. I think also we, we're we using it as a learning mechanism. So of course, we're not gonna learn much in the first year, but if we look back at you know, project plans, the 
estimations that we gave projects we're using linear for kind of project management um or at least task creation right now and that starts giving you some really good analytics where in design traditionally you'd put your finger in the end and say oh i think this will take three months of discovery now you can start well at least in a few in a year's time say no it accurately says we need eight days of discovery um or actually you know that project failed um because we did eight days of discovery we should do um two two week yeah. cycles instead which we do today um so yeah i think you know having a lot of the business value in one place makes it more powerful but ultimately it will become an asset that will help drive valuations and i i don't know what that looks like right now but hopefully in in you know five ten years that will start making more sense but i, I guess it then it puts then the tr the a bit of dependability and trust on that software package doing interesting stuff with that data yep. or giving you access to the data. Like if Notion doesn't, didn't do Notion AI mm. and another product, you know, if, you know, Google Docs or, or whatever started doing more advanced stuff, then, uh, then that's maybe that becomes potentially starts becoming a bit of a USP. Like what information can I extract? I'd never really thought about if you're storing all your project plans and everything, um, so can you? So if you're using like these tools, can you? I guess you can then export into Notion, like a project. You can output at the end. So you're using a tool to like manage more like day-to-day -day operations, but you can extract out of that like a summary. So, and then you would store that in Notion. Or yeah. So so at the moment we we've got a tech stack of Notion, Slack, and Linear. Um, in time, we're going to have Linear um, spit out a AI generated uh, change log, which is ultimately going to solve the problem of having a Monday morning meeting with someone manually putting 10 slides together, saying where we are in the project, what was delivered last sprint and what needs to happen next, which a number of enterprise companies still do. I'm sure, you know, half a person's time in an enterprise business, if they're a business analyst or project manager, they are making slide decks with no intelligence, which actually you start throwing away after that one hour meeting on a Monday. So, you know, having just a few key tools talk to each other uh, means that, like I say, in a while we'll be able to gain some intelligence because not everything you need to learn, you can Google. You know, we would want to know what's our most efficient way of doing something, what succeeded, because we're always making these small little bets. Um, you know, if, if we yeah. were doing this five years ago, we'd probably do a week of discovery. Now we're doing a day at the beginning of each cycle. Um, but we would be able to, to find out, I think, I think over time, you know, we'll, we'll be able to, to find out what, what really works. And I, you know, I don't ask for regulation or, you know, rules set in place, but if every app could export to Markdown or, or something more useful than CSV, yeah. then I think you can start saying, well, you know, let's move to this and we can take our whole data set with us because, you know, that that's the most valuable bit. Um, but yeah, th this is where it turns more into a prediction. Um, right now, all our project plans, um, resource allocation, um, strategy, um, sales targets, and um, marketing creative are all in Notion. That's amazing. I hadn't really thought that's, that's, you can see the power of that potentially then, you know, after a few years of usage of, of like of building up that thing. Obviously, the, it's from a point of view of going, okay, now we can predict, you know, how, um, how profitable that type of work is or whatever. But also, if you then hook Slack in, you could do things like uh, Sally's really passive aggressive with this client. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, but, 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 from a, but also from a point of view of then going, but if the system then understands that, then, oh, sorry, the, the AI model understands that, then Sally doesn't get put on that project. It doesn't mean the project mm -hmm. doesn't happen. But you start to discover these kind of like subconscious anomaly, like anomalies within like team mm -hmm. structures that you just you know you just don't quite see um, because the machine has to kind of process it. But you know that's just kind of quite I wouldn't say obvious, but I guess it's kind of the things you like you know extracting information. But I hadn't really thought about the the, the like notion becomes 
the repository of the business value of yeah. your business. Uh, that's quite uh, quite uh, quite an interesting because because I guess in theory, in ten years time, you could uh, maybe say five years time because of the because you're doing a lot of these assemblies that like the number of projects you're doing will increase and increase mm -hmm. and increase. You you could get to a point where you could just say to the model, we have a client that does this. This is their objective. This is potentially their budget, budget for systems. And it goes into your model yep. of a business and goes, blah, 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 blah. this is how you would do it. Here's the resource plan. Here's this. We've automated this. And and in theory, then, I could buy that model of your business mm -hmm. off you and just run that as a an AI agent. That, like, I don't even know what you yeah. would call that. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It becomes this self, like it's a, like the idea that a business would then exist within an AI model that people can then buy and sell. Um, yeah, I don't, it's, it's quite a fascinating. Uh, obviously, I think for you, what you were discussing is more like the valuation and mm -hmm. then selling the business then becomes like in that as well. It's because then you could ask it like, okay, what's the financial projections like, and it can't lie in yeah. well, unless you tell it to lie. Um, but um, but yeah, that's quite a. Crazily scary, though awesome at the same time. Yeah, I mean, you know, as I, as you know, my my experience has been in design sprints, and that came from a place of you know the the guys at Google finding a predictable way of going from an idea to product market fit. Uh, they did this many many times. They then made a book, and that has been the pretty standard way of getting from idea to something in the market. Uh, and that's that's had a decade or, or, or so of um, you know having that, and people have borrowed from it. Many um, you know startup incubators use it; they do it over six weeks or eight weeks for some reason. Um, but um, that that has been a standard, guaranteed, uh, predictable way of solving that particular problem. What we're trying to do is solve the next problem of you know how do you go from idea not just to prototyping and to, to validating with five users before you've launched. It's more what is the predictable way of getting success in this space. And so we're starting yeah. that in a very much a kind of working on projects that you know clients are coming to us with, but ultimately we'll come to a place where we have a more predictable way of getting from your particular problem and maybe we'll have a collection of problems and then say, well, step one is X. And I think with a rapidly changing world, um, mm. it's, it, that's going to be valuable going forward. Uh, will it go from just products and services to you know, whole um, business ideas? Will it say, well, how do I reduce cost and scale in this situation? And we might say, well, add your current revenue and you know, your, your employee numbers here. I don't know, yeah. but I think it's about getting those reps in right now to understand what a, a, a new model of predictability could look like. Do you, do, you, do you think from your design sprint world and how that process went for creation with the advancements we've seen now of AI generated stuff, the process should change for sprint? We've been experimenting with a no-code sprint. Uh, initially, it started in prototyping with um, creating the headlines, the paragraphs of the prototype after the team have experimented with it. The problem that I have, or you know, problem that I see, is that right now design sprints are very much assumption-based. And you're using the team that you have, and they are the, the A team, they're the top team, cross-section of the business and they bring together very much like a magistrate court bring together the data they have right now um and they do achieve things in a small amount of time and i am a big fan of design sprints as you know i think there's a way to get the computer to do even more of the work and free people up to not you know, even the computer starting to make decisions, uh, initial decisions, then enabling people to do what they do best. So, 
yeah, I, I think there's a natural evolution of it. Um, and we have been experimenting with it in, in some contexts. Um, but yeah, ev everything changes over time. Um, but, you know, design sprints are still popular. Design thinking as a whole is still popular. All these things come in waves. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an exciting area to do, um, you know, experimentation for sure. Yeah, I, I guess that's all you like. You said that you, if anything, it is more of an advocacy for low code and no code because everything is changing so quick. You need to be as agile as you can because you don't know what tools around the corner. You know, you could, the you you could have some some some, you know, and we've seen glimpses of it in this in this AI world now where you can just describe in text or draw a scribble on a page and have the HTML and CSS and everything mm. generated. I, I would I I would be surprised if it, if not before the end of the year, a tool like a Webflow or um, Airtable, you could scribble something on a piece of paper and it will then you know take a photo and then it will basically generate out that data structure or it will de generate out that web mm. UI, um, and then and then instead of you know adding uploading an image. Or you know the first, the next stage to that was to look at like on Splash to get like a royalty free yeah. one or something. Now it will be describe the image that you want. Here's a hundred generated versions, you know that that follow your brand mm. guidelines that you've already mm. uploaded. And it and it you you know it becomes more and more generative generative. I can never say that word <laughs> generating. Um, but it's uh, the the the. The, though it sounds scary, I, you know, just looping back and, and I guess to kind of finish it off a bit is if, you know, there's someone out there that loves the game Tiddlywinks mm -hmm. and, and still plays it, you know, now, who, who would be the best ambassador for that game um, in content, in, 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 you know, from a marketing point of view, but also maybe selling the game, selling a tweak of a game, who has no empowerment, you know, to do anything with it. And, you know, and the web was the first stage, and then the WordPresses and blogs were the second stage, and then the social media rise was the third stage. Everyone can have YouTube, everyone can have TikTok. Then, low code, no code, remove the developer block, potentially, to then build some web stuff. And I wonder if this AI bit, then, is that next bit where you can literally be 86 and you can just describe in text the thing that you've been passionate about or you know in all your life and then yeah poof, like this whole thing gets generated it then potentially then devalues the the value in creation to a degree because it'll be so it maybe will become so mm -hmm. fleeting because everything can be generated um but uh, but i think that's kind of uh kind of cool yeah. in a way you know? it, it uh, as someone who comes from a design world, like how do you how, like that that thing I've just described to you? How does that? I know from a product and from a people mm -hmm. point of view, I'm sure you would massively advocate it. But for someone who who is passionate and loves design and loves that kind mm. of thinking, like how does that feel to think that in the future things will just generate and then potentially like you'll go to a website and it will just be created yeah. for you, and then it will disappear. Yeah, I mean it's interesting that think about you know is it starting the demise of of the internet you know if 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 everything is customized and it's coming from a slightly different um user interface um but then they said the same about voice and previously they said the same about 3d it's going to change everything um we'll just have to see i i know for a fact that people you know a, a company i'm working with right now they put together a template. They explained what it would look like. Um, they they picked a template, put their thing together, kind of showed what it looked like, a proof of concept that got invested in. So, you know, who is saying that you can't, you know, generate a pitch deck saying the right things and you just add your market segment, um, the problem you're solving and your solution and it puts it together. I mean, you, you're still basing the same information of something you've prepared for 30 days over something that you've prepared over 30 seconds. So I think it's it's rapidly evolving 
people should find it exciting. I, I do agree some people are putting the brakes on things when it starts looking a bit evil. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, you know, if, if things will rapidly change, I think at the moment it's novelty, it will become more serious as time goes on and we see more applications of it. Yeah. Awesome. I think we'll call it there. Awesome, Leith. Awesome to chat as always. Thank you us. very much. Enjoyed it. Um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's just, I think it's just a mental, it's a mental space at the moment, you know, and there's just so much.